Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, listen, we have spent many, many months and many, many, many hours geeking out and stressing out about ATF's new rule as it relates to firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And here's the crazy thing. We are stressing out about a rule that is still about one month away from being published and about five months away from actually becoming effective. What does all of this mean to us? Well, we don't know. That's the problem and that's what's driving us nuts. What are we in fact heading into? Well, I got an idea. Rather than keep worrying all the time about what's coming and what are we going to have to go through, why don't we just figure out a way to, I don't know, work around the problem. So today I am going to give you a couple of suggestions. I am going to talk to you about some ways that we can work around it. So let's spend a few minutes a day and talk about the one easy way around the pistol brace amnesty fiasco. Okay, so the issue we're talking about now for about the 138th time is ATF's new proposed rules on firearms with attached stabilizing braces, better known as 2021R-08, which is ATF's huge push to take as many AR pistols and reclassify them as short barrel rifles, subject, subjecting all of us to regulation and taxation. Now, we have done several videos that we've started talking about. Can you reconfigure your firearm in ways that suddenly makes you exempt from these the holdings of these rules and yes there are ways to do that now one of the things we explained in this video right here is that if we had this ar pistol right here and we didn't want to go through the 49.99 club test or initiation we could take this upper off drop a 16 inch barrel on and at that point we no longer are even concerned about having a short barrel rifle because the barrel is at least 16 inches let us remember that the applicable statute here for defining what is a short barrel rifle is 18 united states code section 921 specifically subsection 8 which reads as follows the term short barrel rifle means a rifle having one or more barrels less than 16 inches in length and any weapon made from a rifle whether by alteration modification or otherwise if such weapon as modified has an overall length of less than 26 inches so again we are looking for that magical 16 inch barrel length so yeah go ahead and throw in the 16 inch up or on there but here is another way that no one is really talking about it's pretty obvious when you think about it but here's another workaround because when we take a look at how the federal government defines barrel length and how the ATF says we define barrel length and measure barrel length, this is what we are told. The ATF procedure for measuring barrel length is to measure from the closed bolt or breech face to the furthermost end of the barrel or permanently attached muzzle device. Okay, so what they are saying is from the closed bolt to the end of the barrel or any permanently attached muzzle device is how we're going to calculate barrel length. Now, the, AT, the same paragraph in ATF regulations also states permanent methods of attachment include full fusion gas or electric steel seam welding, high temperature 1100 degrees Fahrenheit silver solder, soldering, or blind pinning with pin head welded over. And the method that ATF would use to measure a barrel is as follows. Barrels are measured by inserting a dowel rod into the barrel until the rod stops against the bolt or breech face. The rod is then marked at the furthermost end of the barrel or permanently attached muzzle device withdrawn from the barrel and measured. So as you can see, if we are permanently attaching a muzzle device, we get to include that in our barrel measurements. So. There are two ways we can do this. Let's talk about the first way, which is, well, you were thinking about just going ahead and doing amnesty registration and making your AR pistol now an SBR and an NFA item. I have a better idea. If you're going to dip your toes into the waters of the NFA items, why not get a suppressor? And if you get a suppressor for your AR pistol, you could pin and weld, thus making the suppressor a permanent part of the firearm, which would be included in the overall length of the barrel measurement. Which means if we took this AR pistol that we had, which let's say a 10 and a half inch barrel, and we now instead remove the muzzle device, 
add the suppressor, which is, let's say, six and a half inches, we now have an overall barrel length of 17 inches. And yes, we have an NFA item, but the NFA item is not our short barrel rifle. We don't have a short barrel rifle. We have a suppressor. And then, of course, if you have zero interest whatsoever in going into the world of NFA Title II federally regulated firearms, which I could understand, then there are other ways in which you could permanently attach to the end of the barrel some other type of muzzle device, whether it is a compensator, a flash suppressor, a muzzle brake, or anything like that, which would get the overall length of that barrel beyond that magical 16 inches, you no longer have to worry about whether or not you will qualify for the $49.99 club. Now listen, I'm sure that some of my viewers have a lot of experience in this, and I ask all of you to put comments down there about how these methods are conducted, what is the best method to do this, what is the worst method to do this, what have you learned from your experience so our viewers, if they're interested in doing this, can in fact learn more about this process. So yeah, one of the easiest ways to just avoid this entire pistol brace amnesty fiasco is to permanently attach to your barrel right now, which is less than 16 inches, a muzzle device that puts you beyond that 16 inch limit. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything related to ATF's proposed rules about firearms with attached stabilizing braces. And if you do, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or of course you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now let's remember part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know the, what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.